6,490 pounds, the Cherokee 274 rear kitchen landing for another season here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is uh, a done to death floor plan, but done extremely well, I think. And what I mean by done to death is not at all derogatory toward this camper. I mean, it's just a very common layout. So why would you choose this version of it versus something else? That's what I want to focus on today. And the good news is Cherokee gives us no shortage of reasons. Um, they, you've got things here like their juice pack solar package, the cargo rack, the factory third tail light and rear view camera enclosed holding tanks an inside and outside kitchen. And wait till you see the, the little kind of sneaky double cooker arrangement they have in the camp kitchen. Cherokee is a deceptively detailed brand. It is very easy to look at the corrugated skin of this and, and misjudge it as lesser. It's, it's not, it's not though. This has so much more equipment than most things in this class. And frankly, the equipment package on this rivals what you'd find in most laminated trailers. This is pound for pound, one of the smartest buy campers out there. And it's no accident. I think the Cherokee's the number one retailing brand as a whole organization in the industry today. And I have always liked rear kitchens. Uh, I, I don't know why. I think even though this is such a traditional floor plan and everybody does something like this, there's J Flight, there's Wildwood, obviously this Cherokee, Catalina does several of these. Laminated brands do this kind of layout for very good reason. It's, it's classic, it's tried and true and tested and proven and it works really well, but they all do it a little bit differently. Like Cherokee gives us a standard 15,000 BTU Coleman quieter air conditioner. Normally in this class, you get a 13,500. And then you can maybe upgrade to a 15. Cherokee just goes bigger by default. Now, what's so amazing to me about this floor plan is how it feels huge. It, like, it feels like there's opposing super slides. And I think it's because you have all of these big picture windows on both sides of the RV. So being able to see out like this, just it makes the whole thing look and feel huge. And it doesn't really matter what side of the camper you're sitting on or looking on or where you, per, where you park it. It doesn't matter where you park this camper. You always get really good views in this one. The super slide obviously is certainly helping give us plenty of space here. Um, you will see that all the countertops are a sealed edge press membrane, by the way. And the, the, the total counter space in this is just phenomenal. Um, we will uh, actually, let's go ahead and get all of this storage open. Real quick mention though, of that skylight up top lighting in some extra ambient light. Of course, you can always just pull the privacy shade in. All of the windows, of course, have some nice shades you could black out. And a real quick note, our master control panel up here, you can see it's just, you know, it's got all your switches for your lights and your, your awnings and stuff like that. But if you want to go Tecmo-fied, what you can do is you can grab your phone and you can Bluetooth it to that thing with the LCI One control app. And basically your main functions, the RV, you can control wirelessly if you feel like it or just push the buttons if you don't. Because storage, I think, is really where rear kitchens reign supreme. They give you more cabinet space and more counter space, typically, than any other floor plan style can really allow for. Notice the extra lights under that overhead cabinet. And notice all of the easy reach outlets. That's something that laminated trailers actually struggle with. That is one of the areas where stick and tin campers, as these are sometimes called, actually do a little bit better job. Because uh, it's basically, it's easier to run wiring through a wall when it's not all one glued together brick house. <laughs> now you see that kind of silvery shield down there. This indoor kitchen is just above the outdoor camp kitchen. And I love all the windows. The delivery driver doesn't realize he's on candid camera right now. You got that cutting board backsplash back there. That would be an awesome, I think that'd be a great little appliance corner. Now, there is one thing here, that corner cabinet kind of behind the stove around the bend through the river and you know over the woods or whatever i don't think that's how that goes actually that is a little bit tricky to get to obviously so i do recommend doing something that allows you to kind of slide the storage to you this is a larger 10.7 cubic foot dc compressor fridge by the way so it's going to give us uh you know faster cooling big capacity all kinds of very handy features there. And you don't have to tear apart the dinette to get to the storage below it. Similarly, this is just a uh, what's called a jackknife storage sofa. It's, it itself is a storage chest. Nothing goes to waste in this space. And that's the thing. At a glance, it just looks like such nice seating space. 
but it all opens up to create just a, a huge gobbledygook of storage, basically. Does that make sense? And this is a great model if it's just one or two of you. You want to leave it parked somewhere. You want some nice peace and quiet. But it's very flexible and good for more than just that. As you see here, if you want to have some guests over, this couple's camper can have decent guest capacity. Now, these are definitely not going to be uh, ideal for big adults like me. I would most certainly be curled up on my side, and I'd probably find it a little bit of an uncomfortable experience to spend a long time there. But a little kid or a big dog, I know a lot of people fold their dinettes down for their dogs every night. And here's another thing I like about this. Like, forget the fact that I have the sofa folded down right now. Forget the fact that the delivery driver's still cruising around the background. And there's Mr. Mike Merica, one of our check-in guys. Hi, Mike. <laughs> he has no idea. Um, <laughs> all of the seating on this face is inward. It's a very social floor plan. It's not a floor plan that is super focused on the entertainment. Now, if you wanted to add a TV, I think I would definitely swap out the factory bracket and I would put in a swing arm bracket. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of the uh, fixed viewing angle factory bracket, but with the way that you could put a swing out bracket, the way that those chairs turn and the fact that some people don't care about the television, this could work really well for you. And if you're not super entertainment focused, again, that couch faces these recliners over here, everything faces inward. And once again, the cross breeze, the light, the ventilation you can get in here is just absolutely fantastic. But this bathroom's no joke either. This is, frankly, this is a great bathroom. This bathroom, you can do so much bathrooming in here. You could bathroom the crap out of this bathroom. You don't even know. <laughs> Handy little, and it doesn't have to always be much. Like just a little place there to keep a couple towels hung up. Although over here, we've got ourselves a very nice like floor to ceiling, six and a half foot tall linen cabinet. Keep your extra toilet paper in there. Uh, I don't need hair care products, but my wife and my kid do. So maybe some hair care products for them. This being a six and a half foot tall camper means uh, a bigger fellow like me, I do need to stand with my head in the bubble to fit. And as long as we're up here, I want to point out Cherokee uh, gives us like a Rockwood feature, one of those big XL vent fans that maybe you'd find in, say, like a big fifth wheel. Uh, the leg room in here actually pretty darn decent for a bigger person like me, which is something that I appreciate. And I don't personally, I don't enjoy ducking in the shower, but if I have to duck for just a few minutes, eh, no big deal. I can live with that. And I should probably get these open for you real quick here just to give you the, uh, the, uh, the full Monty, as it were. I don't, th actually, you know what, scratch that. I don't think anybody wants the full Monty from Uncle Josh. Oof. I mean... I don't want the full Monty from Uncle Josh. Oh, you know how you know how hard it is to turn the lights off when you get out of the shower so you don't see yourself in the mirror and then get dressed? It ain't easy, folks. It takes talent. The bedroom up front is pretty conventional. There's nothing necessarily new or earth shattering here. I do like the fact though that like both in the wall panels and the ceiling panels, they're using these nice uh, team molded uh, kind of trim inserts. What that's going to do is uh, it'll prevent like the hot and cold compression and the humidity of the RV from just like peeling a conventional piece of tape to mask those uh, seams where the wood panels meet, which is what most manufacturers, most trailer brands use. Cherokee and Wildwood both do that actually. Uh, household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. I wanted to show you that there is hanging storage in both of these closets. You can see the full overhead cabinet and that big full viewing window over here. This is a really weird thing. It's one of the areas where the conventional standard series Cherokee that we're looking at actually beats the full black label. In the standard series Cherokee, this opens for airflow. Weirdly, in a black label, the tinted frameless window that you upgrade to right there does not open for airflow. It's weird, but, uh, and I'll probably get you some separate black label footage on it. I just kind of want to give you a little tidbit of that. And uh, you know what, I think, we're I think we can close up the slide. What do you guys think? Now, I always pride myself on trying to give you the most, best, clearest, uh, transparent, fair information. For instance, I think this is a really good model for a destination. I don't know that it's ideal for travel stops because even though you can get back here, you can sneak between these two things and like get back to the sink and the stove. You really can't fully access the refrigerator. You can maybe get in there to get a can of pop, which, you know, up here we call it not soda or Coke. We call it pop in this neighborhood. But here's the thing. This is a rack and pinion slide out. 
That means that if you want to open it only partially so that uh, you could get to more of that refrigerator, you could without damaging the slide. Now, you don't want to be using the slide when it's halfway open, halfway closed. I'm just saying that if you really, really needed to at a travel stop to get to something back there in the fridge, you could. And if you appreciate the way we take the time to close this up and show you around, hit that subscribe button and know that we will always do our best to shoot you straight, sometimes even where an RV isn't the best. And here's exactly what I mean. Standing here, we can hit the slide button, and it, it doesn't hurt anything to put it partially out, and you see how much that refrigerator opens and, you know, is accessible now. And even just only opening it, I, I don't know, maybe only 20% of the way, we can get back here to the fridge. Now, I get that not every parking space can do that. I get that not every person wants to do that. I'm just simply letting you know there is a potential get-out-of-jail-free card if it really comes down to it, push comes to shove, and you're in a pinch. Oh, and by the way, this does have that blue man group neon lighting above the slide if you want to activate it there. Outside, starting in that front storage compartment below the bed there, you'll also see the little charge controller for the juice back and a light for the storage. That's a, that's a dumb feature that a lot of brands miss, but look at the little detail stuff here. The exposed woodwork around this baggage door, Cherokee hits that with a real thick layer of like an anti-wicking treatment. So if there's like, you know, if it's drizzly or if there's the morning condensation in that door when you open it, you're not going to cause water to get on that wood and rot it out or anything. This is also available in Black Label. We very typically carry this both ways. Actually, we do a lot of our Cherokees 50-50 in standard series like we see today. And then Black Label often with power uh, tongue and stabilizer jacks. Uh, power tongue jack actually is part of black label now that i say that but speaking of the tongue jack this is a manual yes but it's an eight second bull rider manual thing with a little uh you know 12 18 volt drill and a little socket adapter you can pretend you're a nascar pit crew driver and put that thing up and down in eight seconds now that same adapter also works on your corner stabilizer jacks. And if you look just over the nose, you can see that just the, the line of that uh, Cherokee juice pack solar thing there, uh, giving you a little bit of extra battery time. We're slide awning ready. Over here, this is our sewer hookup station. That's where our black tank flush is located. You've also got a dedicated courtesy light on a separate switch just for this. Sometimes manufacturers will key that to your awning light and your neighbors are going to get keyed off if you leave that thing on all, you know, in the evening hours because they don't want light flashing into their campsite. Also have a dedicated outside shower and the uh, holding tanks on your Cherokees and Grey Wolves. They call it like an armored underbelly or something like that. The area of the underbelly that contains the holding tanks, those will be enclosed and protected standard. Now an interesting note here, this does have a walkable roof. It's got 5 8 tongue groove plywood flooring, 16 inch on center uh, on average, uh, well actually 12 inch on center average wall studs on Cherokees. Sometimes they double up a stud and that skews the statistical average, but basically 16 inch on center wall studs. Um, the uh, roof decking, 3 8 OSB, walkable. Interestingly, Cherokee no longer offers a ladder option. I guess it had something to do with lawyers and weight ratings and this and that. I wish there still was. I'd put it on there if I could. There's not even structure in the rear wall to add one after market. But the good news, at Halo RV, we carry a bunch of different brands. So like the J-Flight 29 RKS, it's gonna have a ladder. It's a little heavier, it might cost a couple bucks more. They're both the best for different reasons. Like, uh, how about the fact that they're building from the factory that uh, rear view camera system included with this, and you see that third tail light? Because if you put some big bulky stuff on the uh, flip down cargo rack on the back here, you could potentially block those taillights. So they added an extra one for your safety. That's cool, I like safety features like that. The spare tire, interestingly, is actually an optional item that we add here at Haywood RV. Um, well, from the factory level, but we request it that way. I can't imagine sending a family down the road without that. Little detail that's easy to miss, the uh, stove top actually does vent outside. That's with that tiny black rectangle below the CH in Cherokee. We'll call it the ch vent, because it's below the ch Cherokee. <laughs> so stupid. I'm sorry. Got the drunken uncle leash latch over there. And if you're looking at this little outside camp kitchen, they've recently updated this. I like it a lot. First of all, you got a little kind of pseudo sink situation going on here. That 
contour thing, by the way, is an ice maker. And man, I tell you what, as long as you got 110 power, you got water, which you have both right here, you got ice, folks right next to dad's medicine cabinet where we keep the barley water and the uh, bottled water, bo both of the waters basically. But this little griddle down here, or grill, oh, I screwed it up, I, I just spoiled the surprise. You know what, crap, I was really gonna try to make a neat little reveal of this, but I screwed it up, whatever. It's a grill, but it can be a griddle too. So uh, yeah, surprise. Surprise. That's like one of those things where Maybe you forget to do some Christmas shopping and at the last minute you text a person a picture of what you just bought them off Amazon while you were standing there. I'm not saying I've ever done it, I'm just saying. But my point here is that if you're looking for grilling and chilling under this power awning, you got it. Or if you are gonna look for griddling and piddling with the pets, well, I guess you got that too. That leash latch though on a rainy day, or, well, it was rainy, a windy day like this is a nice way to keep your lawn chairs from flying around too. But look at the coverage on the power awning. Because it's not the biggest awning I've ever seen, but it is very effectively positioned. It clears that uh, Invisiview entry door that has the window you can see out of but not into. Big campsite uh, viewing window, outside speakers, TV hookups, and camp kitchen. All nicely, fully encompassed there. It's, it's smart. It's just a really smart series of features. And that's really what Cherokee does. They're like... How, what can we do to this to make it awesome with like absolutely no diminishing returns? That's Cherokee, baby. Woo! Windy. I'm not saying it's windy. I'm just saying I saw a house land on a witch over there, okay? And now her sister is mad. So that's my take on it. But what do you think? Leave me some comments and let me know what you like, what you might change, or any questions you might have. And if you appreciate the really heavy detail information we give you, if you're a real serious buyer, click that subscribe button and follow along here. And remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and enjoy this sunshine, everyone. Yes! Bye.